Okay, on this episode, I'm going to be showing how to add effects to video clips. On the next episode, we'll be talking about how to add effects to audio clips. This one is dedicated specifically to the video clips. And they're both very similar, actually. First of all, if you go to this effects panel right here, uh, down your project panel, and you go to this little effects panel right there, you will notice you have this video effects folder right here. And this video effects folder contains a whole bunch of other folders that contains that will contain uh, categories of other effects. I'm going to tilt it over this window here to make it full screen so we can look at these. You open up some of these. Let's go to blur. You'll notice there's these little plug-in icons right there that will affect your video in different ways. And the kind of the way that a lot of these work is once you add these to a clip, a lot of them comes a, will come across as neutral, meaning it, uh, you'll drag it and drop it to a video clip and nothing will happen. What that does is adds the plugin to the clip, but it's waiting for you to change the specific attributes of that effect. You look under these, you have some distort ones, you'll have uh, some important ones here are the color correction ones, which we'll get into in a future episode. You have some uh, things that to do overlays like a uh, time code and, and clip name. You'll have things like uh, crop and edge feather and a whole bunch of other things that are very helpful in very specific moments. So what we're going to do here is we're going to demonstrate a couple of these here. And it really what it takes is just going in, into some of these and experimenting and see, seeing what some of these do. But I'm going to go through some of the basics here. Let's go, let's do a, a blur one. A blur is a common filter here. Let's let's grab, I'm going to go under and find Gaussian blur. And if you're looking for a very specific one here and you don't want to go down through the folders, all you have to do is go up to this little search engine here. And you know the one that you're looking for. You can just type in G and it will bring up all the plugins that have the letter G in it. But I'm going to hit A here and then we're going to narrow this down. U, S, there's my Gaussian blur right now. there. Narrowed it down to the Gaussian blur. There it is right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to a clip. I'm going to grab my Gaussian blur. I'm going to drag it over and we're going to hold, hover over this little clip here. And notice how it brings up that little plus icon right there next to the fist. You bring it over here, it has that little no icon. And you bring it over this, it brings up the plus. That means I can drop it onto this clip. I let go. And that effect has been added to this clip. But let's show you something here. I'm going to select a clip. I'm going to go to the next clip that doesn't have anything on it yet. And I'm going to select this clip. And now we're going up to our effects controls panel right here. Highlight that. And what this shows is it will show the effect attributes for every individual clip that you select. So I've selected this clip right here. So it is showing, first of all, it's got some native attributes for every individual clip here. These are effects that are, in, I guess uh, you could say, inherent to every single clip here. You got motion effects, things like position scale. If we grab this and, chain, and move this up and down, it'll change the scale. We'll get into these later, but right now I want to really get into effects. So you got the motion, which concludes position scale, rotations, a couple other items. Opacity, you can grab the opacity and turn it down. It makes it transparent or makes it uh, less transparent. And time remapping, we'll get into those in future episodes. But that's my mantra that I always say we'll get into those in future episodes. But we will, I promise. But right now, this clip does not have any other effects besides its, in its inherent effects. If we move to the next clip here, select that. And by the way, you'll want your playhead over the clip while it is selected. That way it will show the frame that you're changing when you're changing the effects. Right now, notice no effects on this. I'm going to go to that first clip that I added here. I'm going to hit home, select that clip. Notice that it uh, didn't bring anything up until I selected the clip. The clip has to be selected. You have to do two steps here. You have to move your playhead over it and select it. Move your playhead over it and select it. And they've added this nice little feature in 2015 where you don't have to do that anymore. It makes things a little more simple. I'm going to go under Sequence and go to Selection Follows Playhead. This is not checkmarked by default. So if you check mark that, I pretty much always have that check marked on default now. And watch what happens. As I move the playhead, it selects the clip automatically. So if you're performing effects on these clips, this is very helpful because you can actually just move your playhead and it saves you a step of having to move it over and select it as well. Now let's go to this first clip and notice it is automatically selecting it, which is nice. So you got to make sure this is check marked. And now look at this. It has the kind of native effects in there or the inherent effects. And then it also has this Gaussian blur effect that's been added. And you can collapse these. So if you have multiple effects on a clip, you don't have to have each one of these open here. But notice it's got the Gaussian blur. Now with the playhead over and the clip selected, all you have to do is go under these attributes. Here's the blurriness. It's uh, blurring horizontal and vertical pixels. You grab this blurriness and you click and drag it to the right. And notice it gets blurrier. And if you drag it back to the left, it backs off the effect. Most of these effects will have multiple attributes that you can affect. Like this one has a repeat edge pixels here. As you blur it, you'll notice it starts kind of blurring inwards and creates kind of a vignette on the outside. If you repeat the edge pixels, it duplicates pixels around the edge to get rid of that vignette. 
There you go. And since it's so blurry, it's very difficult to tell that it's uh, duplicated pixels. So we uncheck that. If you want to just do vertical pixels or horizontal pixels, then you can get different effects by messing with this. Now, one other thing here on your effect panel that I want you to notice is your Gaussian blur. You have this, uh, and actually you have these on most of your effects that you'll be adding. You have this little effects button right here. And what that does is when you click it, that turns it off. Click it again, it turns it on. Now keep in mind when you do that, it does not reset your effect. It just basically turns it off temporarily. So if you don't want to see it, it just toggles the effect on and off. You click it, it's on click it, it's off. Pretty simple. Now if you want to reset the effect and start over, they have these little arrows over here to the right. You can click on these and it will reset. If you've changed something like here and you hit this little reset key right there, it'll just reset that parameter. It will not affect the other attributes. It'll just affect that single and re return it back to the default effect. If I hit this, it turns it back to just horizontal and vertical, the default there. Now undo that, undo that. Now if you go up to the top here, and hit this, this is a reset all. It will reset the entire effect. So if you hit that, it resets the entire effect and now you have to start over again. So you have to kind of be careful what you're doing there and know what you're doing before you just start resetting things. Let's try a different effect here. I'm gonna go down, like I said, you just have to kind of experiment with some of these effects. Let's go to, I don't know, stylize, grab kind of a cheesy posterize here. I'm gonna grab the posterize, drag and drop it onto another clip. So we've got it on this clip right here. Uh, a couple things happen, first of all, this turned red right here. And what I want you to notice is we go down here, let's go to the Gaussian Blur. The Gaussian Blur did not turn this red, it stayed yellow. The yellow basically means this will play back in real time. It's using the video card to play back these effects real time. Red means this will likely have to be rendered at some point because it will probably not be able to keep up with the playback and processing the effects at the same time. Let's go to the Gaussian Blur here and notice over here what it's got is this little icon right there. This little icon means that it is this, this effect has been built or engineered to basically use the video card memory to play back real time. If you do not have those, it will not play back your video clips real time. You can add almost as, you can add a ton of these effects before it will actually start bogging down. And it uses your video card to process the effect. It uses the GPU instead of the CPU and instead of the software. I'm going to go back to my posterize effect and look at this. It doesn't have anything. It doesn't have that little icon on it right there. So since it doesn't have that icon, it's going to be, it's going to turn red, it's going to have to render because it, it cannot use the video card to process that. And I'm not sure why Premiere has decided to do that to some effects and not to others, but some of their effects, it will not use the video card to process the effect. And it will have to be rendered. Let's play this back anyway. It seems to play back just fine. It's a stupid cheesy effect, but uh, we can go over here and change the level of the effect and get different effects there by changing the posterize. But one thing you can do is you can add multiple effects. Let's go to Gaussian here. I'm gonna grab my Gaussian blur, drag and drop it on. Let's change the blur. I don't know why you'd want to make it out of focus. We'll show you some examples why you'd want to use the Gaussian blur here in a little bit. And let's grab one other effect here. Actually, let's get rid of the posterize because that's not using my video card. Let's go into the video effects and find something different. I'm gonna grab a luma curve. We'll go over color correction later on, but let's grab a luma curve and change our contrast here. There we go. So we change our contrast. We got a Gaussian blur on there. So we've got two different effects on this clip right now. The Gaussian blur and the luma curve. And what this does is it goes from a top down motion. Basically this will be important when we get into color correction and other effects. First of all affects this with the Gaussian blur and then the luma curve is based, uh, will do that curve based on everything previous to that. So if you do it differently like that, you'll notice there's a slightly different color shift right there because now it's doing the luma curve before it's doing the blur. When everything's blurred together, then it does the luma curve and it processes it just slightly different because all the pixels are blurred together. So just keep that in mind that it goes from this top down motion here, or, or it goes from this top down higher, uh, hierarchy here that it'll, as you go from the top down, it's affecting it in this direction here. So sometimes you'll get different effects by rearranging the hierarchy here. Now, if you want to delete an effect, you just simply come up here, select a clip, and hit the delete key, and it gets rid of it. Or you can just simply turn them off as well, if you want to, if you decide to bring them back later on. Now, if you want to move a range of effects or just a single effect from one clip to the next with the attributes that you've changed, all you have to do is select the clip, that, make sure that the clip is selected that you want to grab the effects from. You can select these up here. I'm going to select the Gaussian Blur, hold down Command or Control on a PC and select the Luma Curve. So now I've got those two effects selected. You hit Command C or Control C to copy. You move to the next clip, and remember I've got the auto select on, so it's selecting the clip automatically. And Command V to paste it, 
and it just pasted those two effects to this new clip here. Another way of doing that is simply selecting a clip, right click and do copy or just do command V or control V and copy. Move to a next new, move to the clip that you want to paste it to. It just copied all the attributes for that clip right there. Now I can right click on this clip here and say paste attributes. That's going to paste the attributes from the clip that I just copied. So copy and it will ask or bring up this little window. What do you, what attributes do you want to paste specifically? Do you want to paste the effects? If you've done any motion changes or opacity changes, you can uncheck these because I really haven't done any changes on those, but I have done changes on the effects here. So I'll say, yes, I want all these effects pasted. Hit OK and boom, it pastes all the effects to this clip. You can do a range of clips. I'm going to undo that. And let's say I want all these clips to have that same effect right there. So I'm going to right click on them, say paste attributes, paste all those effects, hit OK, and it just pasted those effects over all these clips. Everything's blurry now and out of focus. So let's show you how to keyframe here. Keyframing is changing an effect over time. So right now I'm, I'm going to change this Gaussian blur. Here's a practical time that I might want to use the Gaussian blur is when I'm changing it over time. So I'm going to go to this clip here and I'm going to go up to my window here with the effect. So I've got that clip selected. Here's the effect. Here's the Gaussian blur. And this little area right here to the right, I'm going to move this over a teeny bit so I've got some more area, is your keyframing area for the entire clip. This region here represents your entire clip. Over here, I'm going to arrow down and I'm going to add a little keyframe right here, this toggle animation right there. I'm going to click on that and it adds a keyframe right there. So from the beginning here, here's a keyframe that's going to tell it to be at 47% on my blurriness. I'm going to move this down. Let's do this. I'm going to hit shift arrow right, shift arrow right, shift arrow right. That's 15 frames down. This is your toggle, your animation on and off, and it will add your first keyframe for you right there. This is to add a keyframe. 15 frames down, I'm going to click on this and add another keyframe. These arrows here are your land on keyframe arrows. If I hit this, it'll land on the keyframe to the left. Hit this, it'll land on the keyframe to the right. If you have more keyframes down the timeline here, and you hit these arrows, it'll land on those keyframes. You gotta make sure you land on a keyframe to alter its attribute. If you're one frame off, it'll add a new keyframe and you'll be, barely be able to see it and it can screw things up. So I'm gonna select these two, delete them. I'm gonna land on this keyframe here. Go to the first one, it's at this point in time, it's at 47%. I don't know if that's percent, but 47 pixels, whatever that is. I'm going to arrow down to the next one and set this one at zero. So what it's going to do is interpolate from 47 to zero. So let's go to the beginning. Watch what happens as I start arrowing through this. It gets, it goes from blurry to not blurry. And if you want to change the time on that, all you have to do is say you want a longer fade in there from that blur. I can just grab this and drag it over this keyframe and it's got a longer duration of that blur now. So now it goes from this point, there. We can make that even longer if we want. Watch how long this is now. This is gradual. Looks like it's barely, like it took a while to come in focus. So you can just change that. You can change, you can tell it, I want it to start right there. So it's gonna be out of focus to this point and then it will come into focus. And that is basically how to keyframe those effects. We'll get into future episodes where we show how to do more complex keyframing. Okay, a couple other little items here. Say we want to save these effects that we've created here. What you can do is you can go up to, you can select the clip, go up to your effect control window. You can right click on a single effect and tell it to save as a preset, or you can select a range of clips. Hit command or control there to select a range of, uh, to select those two. And I can right click and say save preset. Now I can name this. I can call this, I'm just going to call this Hey You, I don't know why, but I'm just going to name it Hey You. Hit OK, go to your effects panel here, and you go under this little preset folder right here. You arrow down and it will save, right there is my preset effect right there with those two effects applied. Let's go down to another clip, you simply just grab that, drag and drop it on, and look at that, it applied the same effect. We've got this selected, let's go up to the effect controls and look, there it is, it applied it under the name Hey You and there is my filter that I did as a preset right there, or a, a set of filters. And kind of last of all, when you want to remove effects as well, like we showed you, you can select a clip and select a, an effect and delete, and it will get rid of individual effects. Let's say you want to get rid of a bunch of effects on a range of clips or all your clips. You can select the range of clips that you want to get rid of the effects on. I'm just going to do everything here. I'm going to hit Command-A and, and do everything, or you can just do a range. You can right-click on the clip, 
and go to remove effects. It will bring up some options here asking you which things you want to delete. I've done no motion effects or opacity effects or volume effects, but yes, I want to take out the video effects. You can uncheck those if you want to be safe, uh, but right now I haven't done any so they can stay check marked. But I'm just going to hit OK and boom, everything will be reset to the native clips. So that's basically adding video effects on the next episode. We'll be going through adding audio effects.